Singapore Air was voted the best airline in the entire world, but how good can they actually be? Well, today I decided to try them out by flying their business class experience, which can cost up to $12,000. All just to see if it's really worth it and if they're actually as good as what people say. On this flight, there's gonna be laid flat seats, five-star dining, and a ton of other cool features that I'm gonna be showing you guys. And on top of that, Singapore Air was rated the best airline in the entire world. And so far last night when I was doing the check-in process, we got off to a really good start. After getting the email to check in, I was brought to the main website before being able to select my seat that I wanted to be in. And after agreeing to having nothing dangerous, I was all checked in and ready to go. And guess what? Since we're flying business class, we have a special line dedicated for check-in and grabbing our boarding pass. So let's head inside and do that right now. Making my way into the terminal, it was extremely busy, especially at the Singapore Air desk. But luckily, the business class lines were empty. So let's go and grab that boarding pass. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Singapore Airlines. Yep. Uh, Frankfurt. Thank you. Oh, I'm just leaving right away. I'm just like catching a layover from there to Amsterdam. Oh, uh, no, just to carry on here. Oh, if we need to check it, we can check it. Perfect. We're gonna head to enter gate A2. One time is 7.45. To the lounges, the prime class lounge by gate A2, and the Air India lounge by gate A2. Go down to where it says all gates. That's the priority lane for TSA. Enjoy your flight. Perfect, thank you so much. Have a good one. All right, so we were able to get the boarding pass perfectly fine, but I'm an idiot and I overpacked my carry-on bag. I think it was like one or two kilograms overweight, so they just checked it for me, which was super nice of them. But now that we're all checked in and have our boarding pass, apparently there are a bunch of first class business class lounges that we could check out so let's head through security and do that because apparently they are insane but unfortunately even though i had priority security thanks to flying business class the line was still extremely long but eventually i made it to the other side all right so security went by super quick but unfortunately i got on the wrong line so it took way longer than i expected i was tsa pre-checked but i didn't go in the tsa pre-check line i went to the business class line and it just took forever but anyways now that we're done security it's finally time to check out those lounges because apparently some of them even have showers and then after that it's finally gonna be time for the business class flight on Singapore Air. For the first of four lounges I decided to start with the prime class and after making my way inside I noticed there was a ton of room for seating and eating but now what was the food situation like? Well up first there were tons of different fruits to grab and go a bunch of different snacks tons of different sandwich types various kinds of ramen noodles healthy snack options in these cups and a ton of soft drinks but I think it's time we head upstairs for lounge number two. Unfortunately, I didn't have access to the famous Emirates Lounge, so I guess we'll have to settle for the Air India one. Making my way inside, this one was much smaller than the first, and it did have some super cool robot waiters, but when it came to the food, there were tons of different options to choose from, but sadly, nothing really stood out to me, so I think it's time for lounge number three, which was the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse. Right after entering, I was blown away by how massive this place was, featuring a pool table, Virgin cruise ships, and a bunch of different seating areas, all of which gave views overlooking the planes down below. Now for guests feeling thirsty, there was a full size bar, but when it came to the food, all I had to do was scan this QR code, which then allowed me to place an order online. And before I knew it, I had my soup, cookie and pasta, which was absolutely delicious. But now it was time to check out the best part, which was the bathroom with a shower. I feel like I have to do it. <laughs> I have to do it. <laughs> And now that I was feeling refreshed, it was time for the final lounge, which was the American Express Centurion Club. Inside the lounge, there were tons of different seating areas for guests, an Equinox Body Lab, a speakeasy called 1850, and two entire levels to explore, featuring two bars, but how about the food situation? Well, for this, there was chicken and pasta, potatoes, beans, veggies, salad with yogurt, and a bunch of snacks. But now I think it's time we finally head for our business class flight on Singapore Air. So overall, I'd have to say we definitely got the full lounge experience. The Air India and the Prime Lounge were actually a bit of a letdown considering that's what the business class was supposed to get me. But then the Virgin and the Amex lounges were unreal and I got those through my credit card. But if I had to pick a favorite, it would definitely be the Virgin because of the showers, the food was unreal, and overall I'd have to give it a solid 10 out of 10. But anyways, we now have about 20 minutes until it's finally time to board our flight. So I thought I'd take this time to tell you guys a little bit more about Singapore Air, just in case you've never flown them before or have no idea 
idea what they are. Right off the bat, according to Skytrax's top 10 airlines in the world, Singapore Airlines ranked first above others like Qatar, ANA, and Emirates. And for reference, America's best airline, Delta, was only ranked 20th in the world. According to TripAdvisor, they are rated four stars with tons of awards and almost every single review being excellent or very good. People rave about the customer service, going as far to say it's 10 out of 10 where they get all of the little things right. And overall, people say it was a great experience flying with them. So obviously, since they were voted the world's best airline, they're probably gonna be super good. And honestly, I am incredibly excited that my first time ever flying them, I'm able to do it on business class and it's all thanks to you guys. And speaking of the flight, I think it's finally time we head to the Geep because we are gonna be boarding soon. I am super excited for this. And after making my way back through the airport, I had arrived at my gate. For the economy class, there was a massive line of people waiting to board. But since I was in business class, this meant that we were the second boarding group after the first class passengers. So I'll be honest, this is my second time ever flying business class and every single time I felt out of place. Pretty much everyone who does these flights are like actual business people and they're much older than me. And then there's a stupid 22 year old with a camera doing YouTube videos. So regardless, it is finally time for the Singapore Air business class experience. 22A. To the right, thank you. Now making my way through the cabin, this was the first time I had ever seen the business class seats on Singapore Airlines. And after getting to my seat, not only was it massive, but all of the decor and detailing made it absolutely beautiful. Getting seated, the very first thing I noticed was the massive screen for the in-flight entertainment. And I know it's silly to do the legroom test here, but it's safe to say there was an insane amount. Now obviously with any seat that I sit in, I need to do the comfort test. And it's safe to say that this was the comfiest seat I had ever felt before. Plus, I got my very own pillow, which was a lovely touch. All right, so some initial thoughts so far. This seat is massive. The only other time I've done a business class flight was on Air Canada, and I think this seat is like two times bigger. The seat itself is insanely comfortable. There is tons of room, tons of things that I still need to explore. The in-flight entertainment is massive, and I'm gonna show you guys in just a bit. And pretty much the only weird thing is that when you're in a window, it's kind of angled to the side. So I don't know how that's gonna be when it comes to sleeping, but I can't can't wait to explore the seats some more and soon apparently they're gonna come around with the food and drink menu. But before that happens, I decided to explore the seats some more, starting with this compartment which came with a water bottle and full-size over-ear headphones. Right beside this to the left was a cubby for additional storage and a panel with full-size power outlet, USB 3 and HDMI ports, the three-point connector for the headphones, and also one of the adjustable reading lamps. Now beside the TV, I found this cool little mirror in case you're someone wanting to do their makeup, and yet another place for additional storage. But probably the craziest part was the tray table, which was one of the biggest I had ever seen on a plane. This tray table is ginormous. It is literally huge. And because we're flying business class, that also means we get a little goodie bag filled with a bunch of different amenities. For example, in here, oh, I may have just ripped it. This is why I don't belong in business class. So in here we have a nice little eye mask for sleeping. Cool. We've also got a pair of socks for walking around the plane and for bedtime. And probably the coolest part is the slippers. Because if you're flying business class, who wants to wear their own shoes, right? You gotta wear slippers. Now that I have my slippers on, I thought it would be a great idea to start messing with some of the buttons I had under my armrest. First of all, they're able to do tons of things like operating the overhead lights and various other ambient lights around the seats. Like this one on the ledge, this one in the shoe storage area, and this one in the cubby. Along with all of the other traditional seat functions. To the right of my head, I found three different reading lights depending on how the seat was currently oriented, which is slightly overkill since I've now counted six different reading lamps, but hey, that's not a bad thing. For this seat, I was happy to see that I had two full windows all to myself, and just below is where I saw a bunch of different pamphlets and things to look through. Up first was the Singapore Airlines branded litter bag, safety pamphlet for the 777, shopping magazine with tons of different products, and also how to connect to the in-flight Wi-Fi, which is complimentary to business class and sweet customers customers even though it isn't the fastest that I've seen. Thank you. You're you know it's going to be good when they give you a free hot oh, towel as soon as you get on board. Oof. Refreshing. And soon enough, the crew would be coming around to take my meal order, so I think it's time to check out the menu for the flight. Opening up the menu, Singapore Airlines makes it very clear they are an award-winning airline, putting all of their different awards on full display, along with the various chefs who curate the meals on the flights. When it came to the food, there were tons of different options to choose from, with a salmon appetizer, chicken or beef entree, and a cake for dessert just to sample a few of the many possibilities. Checking out the alcohol, there was truly 
definitely something for everyone, whether you wanted champagne, red or white wine, cocktails, spirits, beer, and much more. Hi there. Hello. Oh, yeah, you're ready. Oh, sorry. Mind the camera? <laughs> is it okay? No. You don't have to if you don't want to be. Of course. My name is Olivia. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, will you meet Zachary? Yes. The flight time today is about 6 hours and 35 minutes. Perfect. So we are taking a look at the menu. So there's a menu here. We'll be starting with the Hudson Valley smoked trouts. Okay. For the appetizer, I would like to recommend to you the grilled chicken breast with the asparagus. Something light, healthier choice, definitely. Or would you like to go for something local? We have a Chinese pork with noodles. Yeah, I'll, tr I'll try the beef. Of course, certainly. Sounds good. If you need anything, let us know anytime, yeah? Thank, Thank you so you. much. So it turns out I was looking at the raw menu to begin with, but the options on this plate are just as delicious. I decided to go with the braised beef cheek with red wine sauce, which comes with wild mushrooms, ragu, broccoli, and crushed potatoes. It sounds fancy, it sounds delicious, so may as well try it. For dessert, we're gonna go with Ben & Jerry's ice cream, and then the wine I decided to get is apparently like $200 a bottle, so I'm sure that's gonna be really good too. And now soon after taking everyone's order, the flight crew did a final pass to the cabin before dimming the lights and soon enough we are pushing back from the gate and headed towards the runway. For today's flight on Singapore Airlines, I was going to be flying 6 hours and 35 minutes from JFK in New York to Frankfurt, Germany and soon after getting to the runway it was time for takeoff. Now that I was in the air, I thought it would be a good idea to change into something a little bit more comfortable, so I made my way to the business class bathroom. Inside, there was tons of space, and on top of that, it was also super clean with all of the things you would normally come to expect, but there was also a smaller mirror for getting ready, flowers for decoration, different kinds of soaps, a padded seat cover for sitting, and tons of headroom. But now that I was done, I made my way back to my seat. Alright, so now that we're in the air, I decided to change into something a little bit more comfortable, especially because this is going to be a red-eye flight. And if if you know what a red eye flight is, essentially you leave from North America at nighttime and you land in Europe in the morning. And it's called a red eye flight because most of the time people don't sleep during that overnight flight. But anyways, now that we're in the air, there is a ton that we need to do. Starting things off, they're going to come around soon with the appetizers, the meal, and drinks. And then after that, we're going to be checking out the in-flight entertainment because this screen is massive and apparently there is a ton of movies and cool things to check out. And then since it is a red eye flight, after that, I'm going to get ready for bed, sleep a little bit, and then when we wake up, we're going to get served breakfast and enjoy all of the morning amenities. But while we wait for the food to get started, I think we should check out this seat some more because there is so much. And while I wait for the food, we may as well start going through the entertainment so I could watch something while I eat. For this system, everything is controlled by this remote and after a quick intro, it was time to explore. Right off the bat on the homepage, there is a featured tab, live TV, popular choices, and more. While on the second, it had the flight map, connection info, and a bunch of other stuff too. But let's start with the movies. Here, there was a newly added tab 197 Hollywood favorites and in total there was over 400 movies from all across the world ready to watch but how about TV well for this the story was similar with there being so many different options to choose from it is truly impossible to get bored because even if you didn't want to watch these there was also live TV music podcasts audiobooks and much more now every time there is an in-flight map, I need to check it out, and overall things were super solid, but my only complaint would be that this isn't a touch screen, and sometimes trying to swipe on the remote felt clunky and just a little bit weird. But guess what, this isn't all, because the remote also had various menus too, acting like a mini TV. But while I was messing around, the crew had came around with the first dish, being a serving of nuts and a glass of wine. Starting things off as like a pre-appetizer, they came around with my glass of wine, which is supposed to be a $200 bottle from France. And along with it, they gave me a small little bowl full of nuts. So let's give it a try. That is really good. I could understand why it's $200 a bottle. Now soon after finishing up all of my nuts, it was time for the appetizer, which was the smoke Hudson Valley trout and garlic bread, which turned out to be absolutely delicious. And right after finishing that, I was served my braised beef cheek with red wine sauce, and it was one of the best things that I have ever tasted. So far we're done two out of the three courses, and I am so tired. And now for dessert, I'm pretty sure I have the option between coffee cake and ice cream, or I could get both, but I'm not a huge fan of coffee cake, so I think I'm just gonna get the ice cream and then after that I'm definitely gonna get ready for bed because I am tired and despite the tough choice I decided to just go with the ice cream but it was totally worth it 
All right, so now that we've been in the air for a while, I thought I'd share my thoughts so far. First of all, this seat is unreal. I could fully understand why everyone calls Singapore Air the world's best airline. The in-flight entertainment is god tier. The screen itself is massive. The staff are incredibly friendly, but there is one thing that I will complain about. So when it comes to the comfort of the seat, it is perfect, but when it comes to the layout, it is a little bit strange. For example, if you want to put your legs up, you're at this weird 45 degree angle and your head's kind of stuck against this thing which isn't the most comfy and design wise it doesn't make a ton of sense because if the leg hole is on the 45 degrees you would think that the seat is kind of in alignment but now apparently the reason for the design is that for when you are sleeping it's supposed to be more comfy than if it was just flat so i think the next thing we're going to do is get this set up into a bed and see what it's like for sleeping because after eating all of that delicious food i am extremely tired and ready for bed but first the crew started handing out nighttime amenity kits so i decided to go through it inside was a plastic bag for toiletries, a bottle of facial mist, a full-size lip balm, and also a bottle of hand lotion. So I made my way to the bathroom in order to brush my teeth, and when I got back to my seat, it was fully transformed into a bed. All right, so when I got back from the bathroom, my bed was fully made, which is super nice. Right now, there's about five hours left in the flight, so hopefully I can get around three hours of sleep, and they're supposed to wake me up for refreshments and breakfast in the morning, so I'll see you guys in just a bit. Good morning. So last night was the first time I have ever slept on a plane in my entire life. Normally when I fly, it is impossible to sleep. Granted, normally when I fly, I'm back in economy. But even when I flew on Air Canada previously in business class, I wasn't able to sleep on that flight. Now when it comes to the bed, it is definitely a little bit different from the seat itself. Basically the way it works is there's the seat and then you have to fold it down and then the bed is made. And lucky for me, my bed at home is definitely on the stiffer side. So this one was just fine. But if you're someone who needs a super comfy and super soft bed, you might have a little bit of a harder time sleeping. And now sadly, there was only about an hour left in this flight before landing, and I think it's time to tell you how much I actually ended up paying for this seat. About 45 minutes ago is when I actually woke up, and that is when they served me breakfast. And for that, I had the option between some sort of noodle dish and ham and cheese. So I opted for the ham and cheese sandwich, which was super good. But now since there's only about 45 minutes left in the flight, I thought that now would be the perfect time to tell you guys how much this seat actually costs and how much I actually ended up paying for it. So just like any other seat, business class seats will fluctuate in price. The cheapest that I was able to find this seat started at $3,000 on this exact route. But at peak times, I saw this seat as expensive as $10,000 American. So obviously that is a super wide range and it could be super duper expensive. But luckily I paid nowhere near that because I used points. For this flight in particular, it cost me 60,000 aero plan points which is insanely cheap for a business class flight especially on an airline like this which is literally the world's best airline but like i said there's only about 45 minutes left in this flight so i think that we should enjoy the rest of it while we still can because after this we are going right back to economy class so now should you pay for this flight at twelve thousand dollars definitely not but if you can find it in the two thousand to three thousand dollar range and want to make it a special event i think the experience is totally worth it, but ideally points is the way to go. But anyways, the flight was now finally coming to an end as we got closer to Frankfurt. And before I knew it, we were coming in for landing. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and watch this video next where I flew business class on Canada's best airline.